Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today is our 12th video in our Dry Docking the Battleship series that we started back when we announced that uh, we had half of the funding we needed to dry dock the ship. In today's video, we're going to talk about one of the other major projects that we're going to address while we're in the yard. And that is the through hull openings. According to our blocking plan, Iowa class battleships have 161 through hull openings. These are uh, important openings, primarily in the bottom of the ship, though many of them are on the sides of the shell plating, which allows all sorts of stuff from uh, water to enter the evaporators to be turned into drinking water, uh, cooling water for the various heat exchange systems on the ship, such as the ship's condensers, um, cooling water for air conditioning systems, tomahawk systems, uh, you name it, anything that needs uh, water probably has multiple through hall openings associated with it. Six of those through hall openings are things like uh, the two rudder posts and the four uh, propeller gland seals. So we've already talked about our plans to repack those when we're in the yard. For the other through hull openings, those should have all been blanked over when the ship was decommissioned in 1991 as part of the mothballing process. So that is 155 openings, 19 that are duplicated port and starboard side, and another 136 that only show up once. These openings come in all sorts of different sizes, uh, everything from relatively small drain pipes uh, to this one that I'm sitting in right now. It's probably about half a curator's height long. It's uh, probably a little over 36 inches, just eyeballing it here. I don't have the blocking plan in front of me that would have the exact measurements. Uh, but we're sitting in this one because it is the reason why we're inspecting all of them. We are in the discharge for number four main condenser in engine room number three. First off, we've done a video on this particular one in the past. That's linked in the description down below. The condensers are taking in cooling water to turn dead steam from the turbines back into boiler feed water. So the cooling water comes in on the other side of the condenser, passes through these water tubes, and then the much warmer uh, cooling water net is discharged through this pipe below me. This pipe has a valve on it, and this pipe has a huge valve on it, and uh, it has a plate welded onto the bottom of the ship that's blanked over. Some of those blanks sort of look like bowls where they're welded onto the side. Some of them are, are flat uh, doubler plates welded over. This particular one failed. So the exterior plate rotted away. It was almost certainly thinner than the rest of the shell plating. It's meteorologically different from the rest of the hull, causing bimetallic corrosion. And the weld bead is different from both the metal of the plate and the metal of the uh, ship. So you get trimetallic corrosion. Also, there's a chance that the weld bead wasn't 100% perfect. The weld beads on battleships are not x-rayed the way they are on submarines. So one of these blanks failed, and we're not quite sure how yet until we get her out of the water. Uh, this is on the flat bottom of the ship, and we're reluctant to send divers under the ship uh, for fear that another boat coming by in the, in the busy shipping channel here on the Delaware River would uh, cause a wake that picks the ship up and sets her down, um, potentially sandwiching the diver between the seafloor and the hull of the ship. That's just a situation we don't want to get involved in. We've got plans to take her out of the water and deal with her, so we're not worried beyond that. Once we get her on the blocks, we're going to look at this and we'll see, was it the weld bead that failed? Was it the, the plate itself that failed? Regardless, water was able to ingress through there and it got to the valve. And the valve failed as well, which we expect. Some of these valves are 80 years old. They fail all the time. I, I don't trust a single valve on this ship to still function. So we ended up with water in the bilges here in uh, engine room number three because it had filled up in here and then gone over the lip through the uh, viewport where the camera currently is, which was opened by the Navy for ventilation uh, as part of the mothballing process. So we were able to patch it, uh, dewater it, but that is a temporary job. Where one of these blanks has failed, 
It's only a matter of time before others fail. There's a strong chance that we'll take this ship out of the water and we'll, long after the ship has uh, started to dry off, we'll still see water leaking out of some of these sea chests, which would fortunately mean that the blank had failed, but the valve on the inside had not. So uh, we've got built in to the project cost the idea that we're going to have to re-weld many of these blanks. We're not sure how many yet. Many of these blanks are fitted with nipples, which will allow us to pump compressed air into them to get them up to a certain pressure. If they can hold a couple of pounds of pressure, that means that the weld is intact and we're not worried about uh, blowing through rust that might be obscuring a hole or uh, blowing through a weld bead that might not have been as intact as it should have been. So we're going to air test as many of these blanks as we can to make sure that they're still intact. By the time that we come out of dry dock, all of our blanks will be verified to be in good condition so that they will last the many decades until we're able to take the ship out of the water and inspect them again. At this point, we've talked about all of the major projects that we hope to accomplish in the yard. Blasting and repainting the hull, repacking the stern tubes, replacing the zinc anodes, and checking all of the blanks for the through hull openings. Rank these in how you think they're most important. As of right now, we've got uh, about 80% of the funding that we want for dry dock, but we can't do all of our projects. In order to do all of our projects, we need approximately $10 million. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support this project. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us in the museum. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. Thanks for watching.